picked the wrong week to quit sniffing glue. Well, hello and welcome back to week two of what I am calling the Spindrift Saga. Um, and here I thought the flying sub was going to be the the uh, problem child, but it's going together swimmingly as subs would go. Um, I'm ready to uh, block this off and start doing some body painting on this because it's been pretty much done. Um, I was uh, carefully gluing, if you last remember where I was on the spindrift, it looked like this. I had glued the back edge, this U shape around the back edge. And uh, I was going to let that sit for a good long time before I tried to start forcing the front into alignment. Well, I did that Saturday. Uh, Friday, it, it, it had cured all, Friday, all Friday night. So Saturday, I picked the thing up. I put the squeeze to it to try to line everything up. And there was a massive crack. Oh, boy, was there a crack. It went pow! It was, it was just noticeable. Um, and what had happened is that this glue line had failed. The, uh, all of the epoxy that I had put in there had failed because it was under too much stress. So uh, off the top came and uh, that allowed me to go in and uh, do some more sanding down of the interior to uh, follow Elliot's advice. Uh, I was already thinking of that Elliot but it did need more and I found out one particular thing that I needed to do and that was take out this little closet door. If you look carefully here you'll see the closet door used to go right here. Well, that was keeping the kit from wanting to bend up like this, which I don't know how well you can see that, but it needs to kind of squeeze together right where that right where that uh, door doorway was, this hallway. Once I could squeeze that up a little bit, it also allowed me to uh, to make this fit a lot better, and I did do some healthy sanding of both of these bulkhead walls and uh, particularly these guys right here and then I well I, I had just removed these girders because they were going to be in the way and I just replaced them after uh, I got everything sanded down the good news is when you do this now just a minimal amount of squeezage is needed to get that to close up so that's that's the uh, that's goal that, that's the good goal but uh, let me show you uh, one other thing that I think could have stood to be improved. Okay, looking at this uh, kit, and I know I know exactly why this was done the way it was done, but good Lord, don't do that again. Uh, if you people are, if the good people at uh, Polar Lights ever decide to reissue this kit, change this part right here. This is not enough lip to rest another part on. It needs to come out substantially. Don't that's that that's where it failed because there wasn't enough surface area there even if i loaded it up with epoxy there's not there was not enough surface area there to uh, rest any glue on it's just not enough i know this was made so that you could take the top off and look at the inside i understand that i get that uh, and back when this was originally designed model makers model kit model kit manufacturers never they never allowed for options like if you buy an enterprise kit these days they'll give you the extra parts so that you can build different versions of the enterprise you can get the alternate uh, uh, nacelle caps things like that back when this spindrift kit was designed it was designed for you to take it off and look at the inside and kind of place this back on there I don't think it was ever designed for you to glue this down um, and these days, they would make, probably make an alternate piece here that would have a longer lip on it in case you wanted to glue it down. So what I've got to do is take a piece of sheet styrene. And if I can do this with one hand, let me put the camera down. Okay, basically what I've done is taken just a thin piece of styrene and bent it into this curb and, and shoved it up underneath here. And... Uh, keeping away from here because you can see where I've chewed away at this ceiling to uh, give room for the lid to fit down more tightly and um, now I can just coat this with epoxy and it will give me much more surface area for 
the top of this hood to uh, cling to. The edges I think we're fine on. I think we're fine down here and this is going to be fun but having this joint up here this is the weak spot and having much more surface area to glue against I think is going to do us better in the long run. I'm going to have to shave down the uh, the bottom part of that fin where it goes down into that roof or else cut a notch but I think just uh, sanding that down smooth to uh, where it's going to meet there will be better off than trying to notch a little hole there. But it also brings up a, uh, a another opportunity because over the weekend I got a phone call or talked to Mr. Richard who is the commissioner of this uh, build and uh, he looked at the last week's video and uh, said some very complimentary things about how everything was turning out and then asked if it would be possible since I had done all this work with the interior if I could possibly take the tinting off of the windows well this is the kind of normally this is the kind of uh, uh, stuff that drives me nuts when it comes to commission work because it's all the little changes once you get started they come back and change something where you've already gone down a path but since this had cracked off and since I was able to remove it then I could get in here and remove the tinting on the windows and it wasn't as big a deal as as it would have been if this was sealed up I would have said sorry can't remove it it's already sealed but since it wasn't I could still get to it so uh, goal for today is going to be glue this in and see if I can get this newly reattached okay we are on take two of attaching the hood I have sanded down a lot of them the roof of the interior I have extended the uh, the roof over the back cabin to give more uh, gripping space right up in here I have epoxied this to about from here all the way over and down and to about there I've got a lot less gap there than I've had before and that comes from the sanding and the dry fitting and all of the smoothing but I'm going to let that let this epoxy cure for a good hour or, th or three before I uh, try doing the uh, lugging and tugging again okay the time the deed has been done I pulled it together put some glue up or some super glue up in that nose piece and I've got it all taped up to let it uh, let it cure now once that uh, CA's had a chance to cure. I'm going to take side, one side off and then the other and put some uh, epoxy straight into there and let that also fill in that gap uh, one side and then let that cure and then do the other side and then uh, take the tape off of it and hopefully everything will be uh, good as uh, good as sealed up. That's the that's the angle I was hoping for right there so everything looks good to this point now we play a waiting game and here is our patient and how it will be wrapped up for the night it will be uh, convalescing in these bandages overnight until uh, at least tomorrow morning when we will take the bandages off and see how well every uh, how well all the bones have set and I'll stop with the medical analogies, I promise. But uh, looks like everything is uh, in its proper place, at least. We'll see how uh, how well it uh, it dries in. And this is it almost disappears in the uh, in the uh, blanket here, in the towel here. But uh, it's got its first coat of white on, and I've put a little bit of putty on the seams that needed to be seamed. And uh, we'll continue on with this work on this tomorrow. Things are going pretty quickly on these two ships now now that everything's closed up I think it's down to the uh, the pretty work well greetings cats and kittens it is Tuesday morning and I feel like that part of the uh, the horror movie where the victim who's been in a horrible accident is about to get their bandages taken off and I'm doing the big reveal so I'm not exactly 100% sure of what's under there but uh, I'm going to cross my fingers and hope for the best. So let's remove the bandages and see how the healing went. And there was much rejoicing. Yay! Um, this came out pretty darn snazzy. Now there is some 
glue spillage. There is a spillage to uh, clean up and address, but uh, you see the windows are still masked so that, oh, let's get it in front of the camera. See that the windows are still masked so uh, I can uh, do some spraying and some cleaning and some repainting of that orange around there. The grills are looking good. Now a lot of that gloss is going to disappear when I hit it with the flat spray. So uh, not too worried about that little, do it in front of the camera, Lou. A little bit of sanding there at that top seam maybe a little bit of filling in with some bondo to smooth that puppy out but by gum and by golly it's 90 percent there and then there's just some fingerprints and some smudges to uh, clean up on the rest of the hull probably the most uh, patching needs done is on that what's with the focus here is is going to be on that bottom seam on both sides where i'm going to need to uh, uh, sand that down and do a little bit of repainting, but um, the stripes came out unscathed and uh, All it's left to do now is install that well clean the hull up a bit and then install the fin and uh, We'll be good to go get ready to put it on a base working also this morning on Flying sub and I'm what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and make the masks for the uh, fin stripes before I start putting yellow coats on here. This is the final coat of primer and uh, before I start putting the yellow coats on it um, I want to actually no uh, let me think that back I need to put a white coat of primer over top of this so that the yellow doesn't have to work as hard to cover uh, this gray see the the white primer covers the gray like a charm and then the yellow will go over the white and that way I don't have to try to make the yellow cover up the gray because it has a harder time doing that so I just need to map out where my stripes are going to be on the fins and uh, make the templates for those and we'll be good to go. Okay, back on the flying sub for a second. Uh, I know this looks way premature and it is uh, to show the masking for the blue stripes, but uh, you may notice something very glaringly obvious that uh, would tell you why I'm putting the, uh, or at least showing you these now. Uh, the masking material I use is yellow. Uh, once I paint this puppy yellow, it's going to be tough to see the masking. I'm, so I want to show you, show it to you now, and then I'll take it all off and paint the paint the uh, the yellow hull, and then put the masking back on. But I wanted you to see what it looked like at this point. Basically, it uh, exposes. This is just you know protecting the fin here. It's meant to expose the area where the blue striping is going to go. There is already blue paint below this, so um, in the normal course of things you would use the circle mask that is on the kit or on the, on the template sheet to mask that, but I had already previously painted that blue and I didn't want to take the mask off just for the sake of showing you that but there is a circle mask on there um, but uh, I want to paint everything yellow and then come back in and pinstripe these blue stripes on here and if I waited until see there's the bottom if I had waited until the hull was painted yellow you might not see the masks uh, for what they are so uh, uh, plus I want to just double sure everything fits and um, so now this is ready for one more sanding there and then the white uh, sandable primer and then we're ready to put some yellow on. It's going to be warm today or warmish. It's going to be up to get up to about 70, which means it's going to be a good day to take this outside and spray. We're getting uh, the, the warm days outside are getting rarer and rarer. So um, got to take advantage of them when they hit. And I'm starting to work on the base for the spindrift. Now that uh, I know that I don't have to do as much repair work on it as I was afraid I was going to have to, that means I have time and resources to uh, spread somewhere else. And what I'm going to do is I've just taken a, just a regular old stock piece of base that I picked up at Michael's and threw some, uh, some stain on it. And what I'm going to do is, is lay, I don't know whether you can see it, I'm going to lay some of this grass matting down on top of it and then set the spin drift on that so it looks like it's landed in the grass. So uh, while this is out uh, uh, drying, 
I can go back to working on the spindrift, but I want to get a quick coat on of stain on this wood so that, um, like I said, it could be drying while I'm doing something else. It's better. Uh, well, you can see I've gone back in and cleaned up some of the orange, uh, neatened up the lines again, got rid of some fingerprints, things like that. And we are about ready. And there's some work under the nose here. I've got some Bondo on there that needs to cure. But we're pretty much ready for um, putting a clear coat on top of this. Well, good morning. It's Wonderful Wednesday. And we are back at work on the Irwin Island Tufer here. Um, I temporarily removed the mask here just so I could see how these colors were playing. Now this yellow is a bit too bright yellow, but it's meant to be a base coat. Uh, I've got the chrome yellow from Tamiya, which is actually the closer color, but because this Tamiya is like expensive and and uh, doesn't go down very easily over other colors, I figured having this yellow here as a base that I could put a light coat of the Tamiya over would be the best way to go, the best route. And then it's a matter of uh, filling in the detail painting on the front and of course the uh, the blue pinstripes in the back. So there's, there's a good amount of painting left to be done on this that I'm hoping to get to today. Uh, spin drift is much further along. Uh, everything is looking good here on the top. I put a coat of, of uh, satin on it this morning. Uh, dome is still not glued in. Uh, bottom, I need to put satin on and I need to paint up around the uh, eyes and teeth there on the front window. Get that touched up. And then I'm working on this base, which of course is just an old piece of uh, wood from Michael's and I put some felt on the bottom. And I'm going to do a little bit of landscaping on that next. But uh, kind of waiting for things to warm up outside because another cold morning and not a lot of painting can be done on a cold morning so uh, um, I think what I need to do now is start touching these, this paint up under the nose and get that ready and I may uh, try to hit this with a top coat. First I need to block that back up so that I don't get any blue paint on it or uh, yellow paint on it. Well here's just a bare impression of where I'm headed with the uh, base. Uh, I've got the uh, grass mat stuck down onto um, uh, the wood base, and this is just a sheet of stuff I bought at Michael's that had, looks like grass and it's adhesive on the back. And it's got this stuff stuck down to it, but it's going to continually molt, so I may need to spray it with some sort of uh, maybe the, uh, the, scenic, uh, the scenic cement to kind of keep everything matted down and stuck to it. But then I'm going to add some interest with some lichens and maybe go out and see if I can find a big old stick that I could put there that might look like an out of scale log but um, but uh, that's that's kind of the idea and this won't be glued down to the base it'll be sitting on it so uh, if Richard wants to pick it up and ogle it from all angles he will be able to do that but um, I kind of need to move this off to the side and finish the painting of it get it a hundred percent done so that I can concentrate on the base Okay, I've just uh, been working on some more detail painting. I put some light re-entry scorches on the top just to uh, break up the surface a bit and some more scorching on the bottom. Not too much. Don't want to go overboard with it. I've painted in the detail on the front and then once I get a satin coat on uh, the bottom, I will uh, take off those window masks because basically this is done. Uh, one big flat coat, really, I think I need to do on top of everything. Um, then I can put the bubble in and take the window masks off because I don't want any of that flat coat getting on the clear plastic. So that's mostly done. Yay! Uh, let's, go, uh, let's go grab the flying sub and put some chrome yellow on it. Okay, you can see what's going on here with the chrome yellow on the flying sub. Here's just a little bit left that I need to... Uh, put some of that on. You can still see the, the lemony yellow there, the sunshine yellow, and more of the chrome yellow on the bottom. So uh, one light pass with the chrome on the top, just here in the center, and we'll be done and let that dry, and we'll be ready, be ready to put some stripes on. And there you go with the finished base. Now this is soaking, soaking wet in scenic cement, so I'm going to let that dry for many, many hours before I uh, 
put the ship down on it because I don't want to get any glue on the ship. But speaking of the ship, it is all flat coated and ready to be finished and all I need to do now is remove the window masks. Well, as you can see by the cherry on top, this guy, that the spin drift is finished. I'll zoom back out so you can see all that. I've got the dome glued in place. Got the masking off of the windows. Uh, if you are of a mind to and you put it up to a light, you can see inside. Uh, the tinting is gone from the windows, but even as that, they're still uh, pretty dark because it's closed off. But uh, the base is still way too wet to put the ship down in. But uh, pretty soon we should be able to put the ship on the base and this first half of the Irwin Allen double feature will be done. Now it's time to put some stripes on the sub I think. And here we go with the blue stripes. I've got the bottom all masked off and ready to paint. Now here's what I, hopefully what uh, you can see what I was saying earlier about trying to show yellow masks on a yellow uh, submarine. Everybody sing. Uh, we're all masking a yellow submarine and uh, so Hopefully you can remember back when this was gray what those masks look like. But we're ready to paint the bottoms. Okay, I've, I've sprayed the, the blue uh, paint uh, on the uh, stripes and I have removed the outer uh, yellow uh, painter's tape. I've left the vinyl on. Oh, I, and the reason I did that is because sometimes this tape wants to get stuck back on itself and it's one source of you know smearing paint that you really don't need to have uh, to worry about so uh, I'm gonna leave these on and dry and um, get, probably put a uh, well I'll remove the vinyl and then put a, a clear coat over them before I paint the top only because I've got no way to sit this down that doesn't uh, run the risk of scraping the paint so I'm going to leave that clean and um, not mess with it until it has had a chance to dry. Alrighty, I've got the tape taken off, the vinyl uh, vinyl masking taken off of uh, both of the bottom stripes. Did a little bit of touch up because you always got to do a little bit of touch up. Went ahead and painted a base coat of gray on the back wall. That'll get the silver over top of that. And I have also painted in the uh, gray on, and blue on the front window and touched up the yellow on the windowsill. So uh, all that's left to do is let this dry for a bit, spray it with a clear protectant, flip it over and paint the blue lines on the top. And here you go Richard, the finished spin drift. It's not glued to the base so when you get it you will have to uh, sit it on there. If you want to pick it up and zoom it around the room you're still able to do that but I'm having serious second thoughts about letting this one go now. <laughs> yeah, buddy, this turned out uh, uh, just as good as I'd hoped it would. I think the scorching, I was the uh, or the reentry burns here, just subtle enough. There you can look underneath there see a little bit of the interior which I guess is your goal windows are not tinted uh, I don't think you saw the reactor or the intakes and the exhaust painted before because I had masks over them but this one is good to go my friend and I will be uh, taking a bunch of pictures of it first but then I'll get ready to start packing her up Good evening, it is uh, Wednesday evening and we are um, getting ready to put the top stripes on. The bottom stripes have had ample time to dry and I've put a clear coat over those so I'm less worried about them getting scuffed up but I still have them on the, on the towel here to cushion the blow. And now it's time to mask off the top stripes. And here are the top fins with the uh, sprayed on but with the uh, painter's tape still on. I'm going to remove the painter's tape now and um, let these dry a bit before I take the vinyl off of them. And here's the flying sub with the masks removed and the uh, uh, mask up top removed. I have, have yet to put the little uh, 
wheel on there and I'm deciding what color it should be whether I should make it blue or whether I should make it uh, a metal color I'll have to check to see what uh, what color it should be but uh, that's ready this is all ready for a spray of clear sometime tomorrow I'm not in a rush to do it today and then I can start touching up what goes on the front there and pop the windows in and also finishing off the back and putting the the wheel on that which I know is red on that back uh, hatch so uh, I've got the wheels already painted here. It's just a matter of putting them on. But that's where we're going to let it sit for the rest of the evening. Okay, uh, working on the flying sub and the base for said sub. And here's what I've come up with. I uh, put a little bit of that putty in the inside of the base to kind of weight it down, give it a little bit more heft because the kit is a little top heavy and wants to it wants to kick over to the side and to stabilize it a bit, I had to add some weight to the base. But I did a little decorative painting on it to make it look like, you know, wave, water, sky, whatever you want to call it. So it's ready to go, and I have felted the bottom of it so it uh, will have a nice presence on a shelf. And I've put the last details on, like the hatches and that sort of thing. Before I put the windows in, I want to paint the crosshairs and the grills one last time. I've got the... Uh, the gray on the front done to where I'm happy with it but I want to touch up around where those windows are going to go before I stick them in and I think I want to take a little bit of accent in here and darken in some areas and maybe put it's not going to have the same type of scorches as the Spindrift would have because it's not an atmospheric ship it doesn't come in from outer space but uh, there's no reason why it wouldn't have a little bit of scuffing along the front there so we're going to try something like that and then uh, get ready to put the big flat coat on everything and then stick the windows in well welcome back it is thursday evening and i'm getting ready to close up for the night and good news the flying sub is all but done uh need to um, put the windows in or give it a flat coat in the morning and put the windows in touch up the white on those lights and it will be done the uh, stripes are all appropriately stripping uh, we've got the detail painted on the back. I've got some contour and some contrasting bits put into the uh, hull to kind of break that up so it doesn't look like, uh, you know, a, a, tinky, a, a Tonka truck. So uh, we're good to go on that. I've got the boxes today, so uh, I might get this all packed up Saturday. Who knows? Well, good morning. It's Friday, and that means it's the final work day of the week, and it's also going to be the final day in this flying sub because it's finished. How many F's can you put in one sentence? It's final Friday on the flying sub. Um, I'm going to put a, and I say I normally put a flat coat on kits when they're done to, uh, you know, kind of seal them in and make them look like real things, but it doesn't seem right for this flying sub to have a, a flat uh, finish to it, so... Uh, and I know if I put a real glossy finish on it, like it just came out of the water, that that would also look like a toy. Uh, and that's the one thing I try to fight, as you know. Uh, anything that makes it end up, your product end up looking like a toy instead of a scale model. So I'm going to put a, a coat of satin on it. That kind of split the difference. Give it a little bit of a sheen. More of a Charlie sheen, not a Martin sheen. And uh, give it uh, a little bit of life beyond uh, looking like a flat kit. And once I do that, then I only have one sacred task left, and that is to install these windows. No, they're not painted. That's a mask. Uh, once these are done, I can uh, pop them in there, and everybody will be hunky and or dory. I've got the base finished. I kind of really like how that turned out. I just tried to do something a little bit different to give the indication of water slash sky. But uh, that fits on there real nice. And then... These will be ready to pack up. Um, I'm going to enjoy them uh, maybe this weekend and pack them up and maybe get them in the mail either uh, either Saturday or Monday, probably Monday, because I just want to make sure I've got enough pictures and video of them before I send them away to their new owner. Uh, so let's get on to the uh, task at hand, which is to put a flat coat, or a sorry, flat, put a semi-gloss coat on that well despite the fact that it's third of november 
turned out to be such a gorgeous day outside that I decided to bring, never mind all the leaves that are littering my yard, I decided to bring the finished kits outside to, to, to photograph them, and here they are. I got the uh, vendor finished this morning. Uh, may want to do one last touch up on those window frames, but I think they are done. And of course, you've seen the spin drift. Let me zoom back out. And uh, there's your right down to snout view of the flying sub. The kit itself is kind of cattywampus. I mean, the, not all of the angles line up, so uh, you do the best with what you've got. And there's down the snout of the spin drift. Now I've been chastised before for not taking enough beauty shots of stuff when they're done and so quickly jumping on to the next thing, but that's the way I am. I short attention span theater here, so any of you out there who are looking to build your own spin drifts, the first thing you do is get rid of those stripes. It's kind of hard to keep the color balance on everything here. That's more orange than it's looking right now. Let me check the white balance again. Oh, it still comes off as more red than it actually is. But, let's turn you around so you can see the detail on the back. Now the kit doesn't have a lot of detail there, just two engine indicators and a door. So you do with what you can. But Richard, I will be packing these up probably not tomorrow, or probably not this weekend, but probably getting them in the mail on Monday. So I will uh, expect an invoice pretty quickly. There you go, two ships passing in the day. And one more beauty pass on everything before I close it up. My own little makeshift turntable here. Don't usually get too many shots of the back end, so I uh, want to show you how those engine grills turned out. And it looks so much better without those stripes. There you go. It's a fun kit. I'm glad I finally beat it. And you go out and find one, find another one for yourself. And that brings us to the end of another week and another finished project. Yay! Um, so it didn't didn't take long. I wasn't expecting him to take forever, but I'm glad to have gotten both Spindrift. Yay! Spindrift. And defeated the demons of that devil stripe and uh, this neat little flying sub which I had never built one of and uh, quite grew to take a fondness to um, and this is the best the best kind of modeling is because a I get paid for it yay uh, but B I get to do the fun stuff which is the building and the painting and I don't have to worry about the unfun stuff which is trying to find room to put it so I build it pass it along nothing can be better than that um, and Richard, I hope you're happy when you get these. I, I hope you like them. I hope you relish them as much as I, um, I've already got a couple more projects lined up for Richard and I'm not going to let him take all of my time though. I want to get back to building stuff for me. So until next week when, uh, we do that very thing, um, who knows, who knows? We might have a prawn in our future. It's been laying on the table here. I've been getting used to seeing it around. So maybe I'll finally get nose to the grindstone and get this guy done. 
I got some fun things, whoops, get back on camera. I got some fun things lined up for the base and maybe that's what kind of, uh, I have to find an inter interesting angle or a way or a slant or a way to come at it that, that takes it out of the ordinary to get my uh, juices flowing on it again. So, uh, ooh, that sounded gross. Uh, so anyway, um, happy birthday to my sister Sue, if you're watching. Sue, happy birthday. Sorry I didn't call you, but you know me, I'm not gonna do it. So, I <laughs> uh, hope you had a happy birthday and we will see you here next week. Be good. Be good to each other. Uh, if you have uh, elections in your area, go vote. Uh, you can't whine about the government if you don't participate. So, um, uh, until next week, right back here, we'll see you here next time.